Welcome to Needle Park, an audio Mises Daily by Mark Thornton. The Panic in Needle Park was a 1971 movie starring Al Pacino about a heroin addict couple whose life spins out of control. It was set in a New York City park frequented by heroin dealers and heroin addicts. The other well-known Needle Park operated in Zurich, Switzerland during the 1990s when authorities experimented with an open park for heroin dealing and consumption. Military man and drug warrior Joseph Califano and former drug czar William Bennett recently teamed up to write a Wall Street Journal editorial entitled, Do We Really Want a Needle Park on American Soil? The editorial is an attack on the recent report by the Global Commission on Drug Policy, which declares that the U.S. war on drugs has failed and is ruining civilization around the globe. The commission consists of 19 prominent people with credentials equal to or better than Califano and Bennett's. It calls for the substitution of legalization and harm reduction policies for the hopeless war on drugs. The Califano Bennett editorial has more holes in it than a heroin addict's forearm. First, the Pacino movie was about illegal drugs, not legalized drugs. The setting was in the early years of Nixon's war on drugs. Marijuana was getting harder to obtain, and heroin and LSD were rising in prominence. The portrayal in the movie is what advocates of legalization, not prohibition, would expect. In addition, the economy at the time was turning from boom to bust. The movie debuted six weeks after Nixon closed the gold window. Governor Nelson Rockefeller would soon get to work on his infamous Rockefeller drug laws that Murray Rothbard called, quote, the epitome of the belief in treating a social or medical problem with jail and the billy club. These draconian laws required long-term prison sentences for small-time dealers and even drug consumers. They would go down in history as a fiasco. Can't the drug warriors ever learn? Conditions at Zurich's Needle Park also failed to support the Califano Bennett opinion. True, the park was a haven for heroin addicts, but that was how the city designed it a teeny island of legalization without controls or medical and social infrastructure. Naturally, addicts from all over the city, the country, and even other nations gravitated to the park. And if I lived in that neighborhood, I would have complained too. However, instead of going the mistaken route of the Rockefeller laws, the Swiss learned from their mistakes. They set up drug consumption rooms that provided a clean and safe place for addicts to inject heroin under medical supervision instead of in public view. They also established a needle exchange program whereby addicts received clean needles when they returned their used ones. It should not be surprising that the Swiss have one of the lowest rates of HIV infection among those people who inject drugs, one-eighth that of the U.S. rate and one-twentieth that of Thailand, which maintains a fully draconian anti-drug policy. Califano and Bennett argue that legalization will only increase the use of legalized drugs. That's a fair opinion. But then they leverage this argument to conjure up stories of a massive increase in crime. They say that violent crime will increase because of drug use, and that property crime will increase because more addicts will need more money to feed their habits. This, of course, is ridiculous. Most violent crime is committed by people on alcohol or drugs like crystal meth, which was only recently introduced because of drug prohibition. With legalization, drugs would be affordable even for those with a minimum wage job. The idea that property crime would increase because of legalization is very far-fetched indeed. Califano and Bennett argue that legalization would increase health care costs to taxpayers. They argue that 30% of taxpayers' health care costs are attributable to drug abuse and that drug abusers on Medicaid are three times as expensive for taxpayers and that for every dollar received in alcohol and tobacco taxes, we incur $9 of taxpayer expense. Of course, one can expect that such freeloader programs would experience such results. Free ambulances, free emergency rooms, free doctors, free hospitals, free medication. What would you expect? The secret truth is that government health care actually encourages drug abuse. Furthermore, Califano and Bennett's article reminds me of the study that found that smoking kills 450,000 Americans each year. It gives you the impression that every year the equivalent of the entire population of a city the size of Atlanta just drops dead from smoking-related illnesses. 
but in reality, the study was only a simulation. The simulation was designed to calculate the number of smokers who die each year. And yes, smokers do die younger on average than non-smokers, but they still live well into their 60s on average. Let us take their three claims in order. First, what about the 30% of Medicaid dollars going to drug abuse? Well, the bulk of this expense is attributable to alcohol and tobacco rather than to illegal drugs. For a fuller description, let's draw from Califano's own webpage where he states, quote, Some 30% of Medicaid health care dollars are spent to treat injuries from violence and accidents and the 70-plus diseases caused or aggravated by substance abuse and addiction. So first he folds in the problems of alcohol and tobacco, with alcohol being the biggest cause of drug-related violence and accidents. And then he adds in, quote, the 70-plus diseases caused or aggravated by substance abuse and addiction. Furthermore, the poor pot smoker who gets hit by a car is part of this 30% of Medicaid health care dollars. I am willing to admit freely that illegal drug use does cost taxpayers a great deal of money on freeloader programs, but this 30% figure undermines the credibility of Califano and Bennett. Next, what about the Medicaid spending on drug abusers being three times higher than on non-drug abusers? While well, again, they mix in both legal and illegal drugs, they ignore the fact that marijuana use in and of itself does not contribute to higher health care costs. In fact, it is emerging as a very cost-effective way of treating various ailments and is now recognized as a likely treatment or even a cure for certain types of cancers. Second, they ignore the fact that illegal drugs result in relatively more catastrophic incidents like death from drug overdoses whereas tobacco and alcohol result in relatively more chronic lingering ailments like heart disease and lung cancer, which entails large expenses over long periods of time. Now we go back to Mr. Califano's webpage for some clarification. It turns out that Medicaid expenses for drug abuse is not simply 3 to 1 here, but between 2 and 3 to 1. Quote, Medicaid patients with drug and alcohol problems cost $5,000 to $10,000 a year more in health care costs than those without such problems, that is $5,000. So, not only do Califano and Bennett blame all health consequences on one aspect of behavior, that is drug use, which is scientifically illegitimate, but they also conflate legal and illegal drugs, and they take the top estimates of additional cost and then misrepresent those inflated numbers. Finally, there is their claim that every dollar in alcohol and tobacco taxes collected results in $9 in government spending on federal health care, criminal justice, and social service costs. Now, I could not find a reference to this fact on the Internet except in their own work. But admittedly, I have seen a study arguing that smoking results in social costs that are several times the amount of excise tax revenue collected. However, this study forgot to include the benefits of smoking in its calculation and wrongly considered private cost to the smoker as social cost. When these are taken into account, smoking generates more tax revenue than social cost. Another study finds that smoking causes absenteeism at work. However, this study just looked at whether an absentee worker was a smoker or a non-smoker. When you include other variables like weight, gender, age, and marital status, the statistical significance disappears. So when you read about research with alarming statistical findings, you are probably reading about biased research funded by the nanny state. No one wants a needle park in his or her neighborhood, but that is exactly what prohibition brings. Prohibition also brings increased violence and property crime. Legalization would bring commercially produced products that are reasonably priced, Consumers would be able to afford the products and could consume them in the privacy of their own homes. Violence and property crime would decline. Sellers would be required to provide sufficient safety information and would be liable if they sold an inherently deadly product. I have no doubt that if Califano and Bennett were in charge, they would invoke Rockefeller-style laws. Or even worse, Bennett once suggested that beheading drug dealers was, quote, morally plausible. The reality is that limited legalization has been shown to work and that full legalization is the policy we should be working towards. 
the recent legislation sponsored by Representatives Barney Frank and Ron Paul is one step in the right direction. The Ludwig von Mises Institute hopes you have enjoyed this audio Mises Daily. For a world of free market literature, media, and discussion, visit Mises.org.